Hello there, my name is Alexey Lisovsky, as I was introduced. I'm working for Data Agrad company, which is a consulting company, and in the next 40 minutes you will know how our consulting company is dealing with searching and troubleshooting. Okay, I will try to speak louder. So, I will tell you how with PG Center, with console utility, you can easily search for errors, for problems, and to troubleshoot them. A couple of words about myself, because I believe it must be important for you who is standing in front of you and why he is uh, addressing these issues. I used to be a system admin for quite a while I was dealing with uh, Linux, with monitoring, but then I switched to Postgres and uh, I became PostgreSQL DBA as I spent much of my time uh, administrating PostgreSQL. Now I'm working with Postgres every day and our customers are providing different material for new conferences. So. All communications with my colleagues and my customers uh, happens in chats. It, dif it could be different chats like Telegram, WhatsApp, or Slack. Sometimes they find a problem and they write uh, and they communicate it to us. We have to react, of course. I think all of you know this picture, this uh, this diagram, how to um, find different Linux performance problems. In fact, it shows you how Linux is built and what utilities can be used for troubleshooting. Well, you can just wrap with all these utilities and uh, see what's going on, but eventually you will find that Postgres is the key element, because Postgres is using CPU, I.O., memory, everything is allocated to Postgres. So, Postgres will be everywhere. For Postgres, we have the same picture um, that uh, divides Postgres into several subsystems and shows you what is Postgres all about. Postgres has a lot of statistical views. By using these views, you can analyze uh, um, how the subsystems are working. These stats and views are. Um, they are very numerous and they have columns with their names and it is very difficult to keep it all in mind. And when you are looking for a certain problem, you need to recall these view names, you have to find your scripts and it's very difficult. And you always come up, come across the question, what is lagging, why it happens and what can we do with this? And it takes some time to, to do it all and as I was working with one of my customers, I tried to uh, to take my scripts and I tried, tried to fix the problem and I suddenly realized that I can write, that I could write a program that would fix it all. And I wrote PG Center written on C and uh, it actually showed you stats. Then I realized that uh, C um, didn't suit me because I'm not a professional, uh, because I didn't, I was not a professional uh, programmer, and I decided to use another language. So one of the advantages of uh, Go is that you don't have to compile the application. The compiling systems just checks after each commit, it compiles a binary and then it adds it to release page. So you don't have install any packages or GCC. All you have to do is to go to releases, follow the link and pack it and just use. From the very beginning PG Center was built around top like stats viewer. They show you how the dynamics of statistics in one or two seconds. Then I started to add new functions and I have come up with stats recording and reporting. And just recently I added weight events profiler. Uh, this thing allows you to, to 
to see where uh, queries are suspending. And as I was developing the PG Center tool, I tried to keep PG SQL language syntax. In fact, you can launch PG Center top and uh, it will show you some stats in more complicated uh, cases like when you're working with uh, another user or you have to connect to another database or to another instance on a different host, you can actually type the same keys you are using in PGSQL. They enable connection to a particular host, particular port, particular user, particular database. But even without host, you can uh, connect by using this command. It allows you to establish connections without socket. Apart from this, PQ are supported even if you have a very um, unusual case like PG stat statements is installed in a custom schema and PG Center cannot find it. You can redefine your behavior um, through this. And this is how utility looks like this is its appearance. When you launch it for the first time, you may get frustrated. Looks like it lo looks like a air traffic control center with a lot of numbers and letters, and everything is changing. But it doesn't matter. All you have to keep in mind that PG Center interface consists of three parts. First is system information. All this information is on top of your screen top left corner next block is information about Postgres is it's located on in top right corner here you can get some information about your Postgres instance how it is operating right now and the third block is a st statistics that you get from stat views. So all these stat dynamics is shown in this part of the screen. Besides, interface provides you with additional features. By hitting arrows left and right you can change sorting. You can pick up uh, a preferable field and then sort information. Uh, for instance, you can sort by field names, uh, query times, uh, transaction lifetime, and so on and so forth. If information is too much, you can use filters such as regulars, and you can limit it to. You can filter only relevant information like queries by a particular user or some like selects or updates. Okay, in this presentation, you will learn what cases can be used in your day-to-day -day routines while working with Postgres. And the main case is to check, are there any problems with the database? And here we can um, leverage well-known use methods. If we see that everything is okay with resources, we can go to errors check. First, we need to check system information. Here, we can see CPU usage information. If you know top utility from Linux, this uh, stats section must be familiar to you. It shows you how CPU is used. If we are interested in memory stats, you can get this information from next row. And also you can get information about swap if you are using swap in your system. And swap is uh, important for databases, normal operations. So you can get stats on swap too. Here we just check whether we have any problems uh, with uh, resources utilization. But what about IO and network, you may ask. This stats is available too, and I will show it to you a little bit later. All right. Uh, once we checked uh, utility uh, resources utilization, we can go directly to Postgres instance performance. We can see uptime. 
Well, uptime in Postgres is a very biased thing, but um, it's better than nothing because we can see for how long Postgres have been running. Besides, you can see connection state because not all clients working with with Postgres they are not all okay. There could be some suspended transactions, there could be um, idle transactions, and so on and so forth. We need to check for them and and to fix problems like this and finally auto vacuum I'm sure that uh, many of you know what auto vacuums is and it's a very tricky tool so you can get information about vacuum too you may see uh, how many workers uh, are launched their duration and you can respond to this information somehow and of course long transactions because Postgres is EVCC based uh, database it has engine and this engine uh, relies heavily on how long transactions are running so you need to keep your eye open on long transactions besides PG stat database uh, view also provides you with uh, some information about errors uh, I'm talking about rollbacks field it's not about just rollbacks but it's also about errors that occur in your database it could be constrained or syntax um, errors so you can use these stats to check it also in PG stat database you may find information on conflicts so in fact these are errors too that uh, tell you that something is going wrong in your database well we have launched PG Center and in some time we managed to cover a lot of uh, things and uh, in order to do the same we should have run other utilities like top, vmstat, iostat, nixstat and others but we can now do it by using just pgcenter okay let's say that during our checks we have found that uh, there is some extra load on CPU very simple example you don't have to, you don't have to look through this all just pay attention to what is more relevant to you for example CPU usage is 85% meaning that uh, uh, CPU utilization is too high and we need to find what is loading CPU so much of course it's Postgres but we need to go deeper into Postgres and we need to know what types of queries are consuming CPU so much if we take a look at the second part of the screen we will see that the number of uh, active clients is 38 and we can uh, also see a neighboring statement idle and exact and they are not suspended, they are not idle and it's good on the other hand we have 20 suspended transaction waiting transaction and we can sort uh, transactions lifetime and see how much time transactions are waiting and we can see that it's only one transaction which is idle and it uh, it's it's just 15 seconds but that's okay not a big deal okay but we are looking for the source what is uh, what loads our CPU for this we use PG stat statements it's a concrete that shows you uh, some stats on queries like resources utilization duration and so on and so forth and it's not enabled by default and that's why uh, always enable PG stat statements in order to do so. First, we need to have a look at time. By using arrows, we can easily solve this information and we can see queries that loaded our CPU the most. So it's information over the last 24 hours, and you can see a particular query that and it and it took around two hours to perform to execute this query and once we identified 
uh, this query we can go to logs and we can actually explain why it happened we can see the plan or we can do something with this maybe index is missing or maybe we can change um, we can change some so we have information what is using our CPU time but there is a trap because we are sorting by total time by, but total time includes not only CPU time but also time spent on block operations like writes and reads so it would be better to sort on TCPU T field it's more relevant to us as it enables us to see CPU time Moreover, this history uh, shows uh, the most time-consuming queries. If we need to check uh, the most time-consuming queries at the moment, we uh, do it in policy SPUT. So we uh, do the we compare the difference, compare the delta between uh, the status uh, one second ago and the current status. But this will be a another query. Uh, and in the current seconds, uh, it has consumed five seconds. Maybe it's parallel working, or maybe it is very in intensive launching. If you check uh, calls, the calls column, you can see that uh, there is one query per second, maybe uh, a query with parallel workers with six scans in the table. Under the hood, uh, we could have used other utilities, top and PG stat activity and PG stat statements. This is uh, uh, collected in uh, one point. Another thing is uh, entry exit load and here we need to understand uh, what uh, consumes uh, log in log out time or e entry exit time here we check uh, the system utilization and see that the waiting time of the entry exit is quite high 27 percent fine we need to look for the queries uh, which uh, require entry exit. You can also uh, see that many clients have background worker tip. This shows that we do have parallel working, that we do have parallel queries. Let's check wait events to see that those clients uh, uh, wait uh, uh, entry or exit. So a lot of time is used for reading data from the disk. Here we may need history or statistics on uh, blocked entry exit with the hot key we use AO start to see disk uh, device utilization. Uh, we will see that utilization of one of the devices is 99% and here is the trap that we need to avoid. PVAV device and here we need to check not only utilization but latency as well latency will be only one millisecond which is normal and which means that we don't have any issues with productivity and car, uh, modern SSD uh, devices perform entry exit uh, operations in several flows that's why we may see high uh, utilization but low latency if we see high latency that means we have an issue and something needs to be done let's see what type of queries uh, perform most entry exit functions? So here we check not only CPU time, but the entry exit time, total read time column, time spent on uh, reading of data uh, from the time the history was uh, erased. So. Here we can check uh, the history in the past second. Read time column. So we can uh, apply different sortings uh, uh, to see uh, which queries consumed most time uh, in terms of entry exit. And then we can uh, 
check uh, in the logs, find its parameters to understand why it took so long. The PG Center also provides query ID. It's a quasi uh, query identifier. Not the same one provided in PG statements. It's a slightly different one, but you can use it uh, to create reports. PG Center provides reporting function uh, by the type of queries. Through a hotkey, we can uh, provide query ID, and PG Center provides a report made of three parts. The first part is the summary, the summary of what has been going on based on the statistics uh, accumulated in PG statements, the number of queries, uh, time uh, spent on CPU, time spent on entry exit. Uh, the second part is uh, which explains uh, how much the query contributes to the overall statement. And, and part three, if the query text itself. By having those reports, we can easily understand how much load uh, the query contributes to the overall load. So what have we found under the hood? Uh, it is covered by a uh, top low stat PG stat activity and PG stat statements utilities. But client uh, queries is not the only uh, thing that allows us to do entry exit. There are some background tasks which may uh, load CPU like checkpoint, well writer, auto uh, vacuum workers, and background workers, uh, which can. Uh, scan uh, tables or indices concurrently. Uh, they provide progress on vacuum, which is quite good already. Let's assume that w everything is all right with our resources. There is no blocked entry exit. Uh, CPU is fine. So we need to to check what's going on with the errors at the error level. This is uh, when a client uh, writes in the chat that nothing is working. Everything is standing still. We quickly uh, check the resources utilization, but we need to see how many clients are connected. Here we see we have 22 active clients, and 21 of them uh, are waiting, are in the waiting mode, which indicates something is wrong. If we have a look at the wait events, we will see that all of them are in the waiting mode of the transaction identifier. <coughs> so some client is doing something and the others are waiting in line, queuing, uh, for this transaction to be executed. Check the next field to see transactions, uh, idling transactions. Here are the six of them, uh, sort them, apply sorting by time, by time of the transaction. If you see the sorted field, we can see the transaction that has been in, uh, in operation for 10 uh, minutes. Some of them have been in operation for seven minutes, so and they are queuing behind the one uh, that has been uh, on for 10 minutes. If we check the event type of this transaction idly, you can see that it waits the entry uh, from the client application side. So if the application did something, opened the transaction, and then uh, retrieved to do something else in its own code or with some other data source. So there might have been a, an error, and the transaction closed. Some other transactions arrived. Uh, uh, wanting to update uh, the lines and uh, got blocked and now they're all in waiting. Uh, the simplest workaround here is to cancel this transaction. There are two uh, functions, PG cancel backend and the other one uh, that help you uh, stop this backend. In PG uh, you can also have this functions through hotkeys, uh, you can uh, kill back-end transactions uh, or kill them in groups. 
So under the hood, we have PGSTAT activity and PGSTAT statements. And of course, PG cancel backend, PG terminate backend, uh, which helps uh, quickly reanimate the system. But the situations can be different. Sometimes it's not uh, transactions queuing. Sometimes uh, the transact there is a long transaction in the table of the queue implemented in the database. There might be some table with a lot of inserts, a lot of lines are deleted or updated, then a long transaction has arrived which worked with this spreadsheet and then uh, moved into the idle mode and uh, there is a long queue of other transactions waiting behind. Another situation is when the application tries to update the same data uh, in several flows and those flows uh, start overlapping and there are blocks, uh, uh, deadlocks, and things uh, go wrong. My, in migration, you can have some heavy altered table. <laughs> this is a heavy task, um, but it was fixed in uh, version 11, but uh, many clients have the old versions which do not support elder table. This elder table can uh, accumulate uh, the queue of waiting elder transactions. And one more, create index concurrently when somebody, without knowing it or because it, ha it was forgotten, uh, blocked the table by creating the index. And again, we have the line of transactions waiting. Another case is replication. It's hard to imagine that there is Postgres server without replication. So re keep track of the replication, make sure everything is fine with, with the replication. For that we have a, st a stat replication command, which uh, uh, shows the number of clients uh, related to the replication um, by the mm, replication protocol PG Center. Uh, supports pgstat replication and through the hotkey you can switch to it to see what's going on. Here we have five clients all connected and uh, they are uh, working on the transaction journal. If we check the names of those transactions or the names of clients, you can understand who they are and what they do. Here we have val two val receivers, two replications and now we need to understand what is the replication lag between of, of those clients because the lag replication affects uh, the scope of the transaction. If the lag is small, uh, it's a small problem, it's a big, that means it's a big problem, the replication is uh, way behind, we need to understand why. PG stat replication provides different information helps us calculate a, a lag in bytes in seconds. One of the replications, it has a lag at the level of 1.5 megabytes. And uh, in terms of time, it's two hours. It's normal replication, although it has been said with a delayed recovery of a transaction uh, uh, journal. It uh, downloads all uh, journals and works with the one that has ta have taken two hours to work on, which is a normal replication. Let's check the, uh, the other clients. Here we have base backup and one PG receive val. Base backup is a normal base backup, uh, which gets data through the replication protocol and PG uh, receiver, which is uh, getting the journals to some remote uh, vault or remote storage. We don't see any issue here, nothing criminal. Uh, at the same time, PG stat replication helps us see the lag in several units or dimensions. In bytes, we have five matrices, pending, write, flush, replay, and total lag. Pending is when the uh, transaction journal has been generated, it is in the master, but the master hasn't uh, give, transferred it to the, re to the replication. Right is when the journals are transferred, but it hasn't been written yet. Flush is when 
it's replicated uh, but not loaded to safe storage. Replay when it is in the safe storage and the only thing to do is to play. Total is the uh, total value uh, from the generation to the replay. So by uh, observing the lag in di at different points, <coughs> you can uh, identify, locate the issue in the master subsystem, or is it a, a, a system error that uh, reduces the transfer rate or some overloaded uh, replication system, which is getting slow. We also have lag replications in time, which is um, easier to understand. People understand minutes and seconds better than anything else. And lag replication in transaction, you can track the values to understand how many transactions uh, need to be played by the replication to catch up with the master. But this uh, uh, feature is turned off by default in Postgres. Um, it is rarely needed, only in special cases you need to activate it before you use it. So PGStat replication through which we got all those numbers plus a number of functions that help us uh, process the so-called locations uh, in the transaction journal, LSNs, the so-called uh, logical sequence numbers, if I'm not mistaken. It is simple math. We take those uh, uh, items in the transaction journal and get the specific numbers. So I've told you about the main cases, but there are a lot of other things behind the scenes. PG Center uh, top can show you uh, statistics uh, across the tables number of updates, deletes, inserts, uh, live lines, uh, deadlines, indices, statistics. You can see in the indices uh, utilization, find the indices that are not used and uh, put them uh, in the blacklist and then delete them. Statistics on functions to see which functions are launched most of all, how much time they consume. You can sort them uh, uh, to see which ones need, need to be optimized. PGSTAT progress vacuum, uh, which was uh, got, well, appeared first in version 9.6. So you can check with progress how fast it is. So it has been a new perspective. It's become a new perspective on the processes. It doesn't uh, work uh, ideally, but still it's a good tool. There are some auxiliary administration functions, uh, log viewing, configuration viewing, configuration change. Through hotkeys we can open uh, this information, something, adjust something and then do reload through hotkeys again. Not the best practice, but however, but you can still use it. Uh, there are uh, log view functions. You don't need to remember where the log is located, how to uh, reach it. You just press the hotkey and uh, you see the log in the pager. You can find the right queries, parameters, copy it, and use it. There is PSQL uh, call. Press the hotkey, open PSQL, uh, to see the database to which the PG Center is connected. So we can do it through PSQL. PG Center is the main uh, utility that has been developed from the very start. Apart from the top, there are other utilities which are part of the PG Center record and report. PG Center record and report. Well, the essence of those uh, functions is to get s immediate snapshots of the statistics and store them in the file once a minute, uh, once a year. Uh, and then through report, we can build reports similar to the ones showed by the top. For some functions, it may be useful. I use it for some micro benchmarking. When I need to test something, I launch PG Center record once every second. It uh, records snapshots, so I don't need any monetary agents. I can do it without those agents. I have uh, recently added profiling weight events. You can uh, take long queries uh, to see uh, at which uh, stages uh, the query is consuming a lot of time. Uh, 
You can sort by balance, for instance. <coughs> you see, 44% of the time, the query is doing some useful work. The remaining time is uh, waiting for uh, entry exit, reading of files, interaction with parallel workers, etc. Another simple example is vacuum full. You see that most of the time is spent on vacuum full. Vacuum full does disk uh, entry exit, only 12%. So this is a useful tool if you need to quickly understand what your long queries are doing, if you have time to do this. That would be the end of my presentation. Thank you. Questions? Uh, first of all, thank you for this utility. I'm using this utility and I really like it. My question is, very frequently I use it from my laptop and when I see, when I'm well, looking through PG state statements, the column with text doesn't fit my screen. Is there any... Um, any capability to change the order of um, columns or to disable them for, for a while. Unfortunately, it's not possible right now to do it and architecturally it would be very difficult to do it. Maybe we can change something or to rewrite something and this feature will be available. Not to change the order but to disable and to enable some columns. But the second question comes, maybe you will uh, want to to save this configuration so here comes the necessity to have a configuration file so it's a very tricky task because it's growing uh, like uh, like a snowball i think we can do it but as for, for a moment it's not it's not possible maybe it's just just uh, an item in our wish list and my second comment from the same area when we are using database mode and rollbacks um, are shown I would like to distinguish uh, command based rollbacks and non command based uh, role based unfortunately PG set database uh, interface doesn't allow having this that is why this feature is not possible right now maybe we can use uh, PG stat statement to count uh, rollbacks, maybe it is possible, but still it is very, very difficult. It's just my wish list item. Yeah, we can make it using join uh, operator and add some uh, mathematics. So theoretically, it is, it is possible, it is feasible, but we need to assess whether the query will not be too long. Thank you very much for your utility. Alexey, thank you for your talk. Tell me, please, your utility. Uh, what, what, what version of Postgres does it support? I tested it since version 9.09.1. If uh, some questions related to replication do not work, you will see an error and you can switch to a different stats, to a different screen. And also, it's, it is compatible with 9.4 because now we can use select functionality select where filter something like this this syntax is like this so in all version it doesn't exist but now you can find it and in older version like 9.3 uh, it will be available so it will either work or it will show you uh, zeros but I'm trying to test my utility on all versions to minimize the number of errors. Alexey, thank you once again for the utility and and to introducing top interface. So double thank you. I try to make hotkeys 
similar to other utilities. For example, filter button is slash. So if you know Rias, so slash is uh, used to type a search template. So my question is, maybe I missed it from your presentation. It's about sorting. It's like in top the field. Is it highlight? So it's the same. Yes, I didn't show it on screenshots, but when you are performing a field search, uh, this will be highlighted. Yes, the field will be highlighted every time you um, navigate to the screen with arrows. You see that uh, it is changing, and the column name is highlighted. Thank you once again. Thank you for your utility. In fact, I learned about it uh, for the first time just today. It has a lot of capabilities. The question is, you say like I have 85% uh, of CPU usage. Let's analyze what's going on. And for this, I will go to, to, to snapshots, to stat statements, but it can say it contains archive, but we need to know what's going on right now. It's not archive. Let me show you. See? CPU usage is here. We have two fields. First is total time. Total all time. It's here. It's how much time query is spent since statistics was resetted. For example, if we reset it uh, every 24 hours, you will get stats over the last 24 hours. And also, you see T underscore read, and so on and so forth. And we have the same fields without T prefix, and they show you stats over last second. So you can see time. CPU time spent on uh, performing, on executing a particular uh, query. Well, that's clear, but what if something happens and it's not in PG statement, so we, uh, we call PG statement every second. It's like almost real time. But the question is that start statements will, will go later and 85% is right now. Well, yes, there will be some deviation in stats, but still you can see current statistics in uh, PG state, state statements. If you see that your CPU usage uh, went down, you won't see that stats that was 10 seconds ago. Well, there is no such introspection like it was implemented in in top. Well, still it's about past and future, but CPU it's right now. And you have to analyze what will go to PG stat statements. Well, for this you have monitoring systems. with graphs and everything and uh, by using this historical data you can analyze your uh, your performance but this is an ad hoc tool to see what's happening right now I have the same question can we export this text as a plain text and to put it later on in Grafana or other tools Yes, you can uh, export the stats into text files, but it will not have uh, interface with arrows. So you can call for PG Center report. It will read all files of statistics and then will show you like so. So I was inspired by this tool, but you won't be able to use arrows and other interface capabilities.
Alexei, thank you so much. My question is, unlike X database, Postgres unfortunately doesn't have cumulative uh, weighting stats. Do you have a profile that uh, makes um, a breakdown on this? And what's the quick frequency of calling them? So by default, it's 10 milliseconds with minus F, like in like in perv record but frequency can be changed you can change the digitalization frequency but high frequency will bring extra load on your stack on your system but in fact queries in memory are very very light just less than millisecond but if uh, it bothers you you can change frequency like every 50 milliseconds and i calculated it I measured it, how it influences, how it impacts stats. There are some deviations, but just one or two percent. So if you accumulate all these fields, you will see that uh, one or two percent were lost. But you will have total stats and you will see what was lost. What, well, even in this example, you can use it. Well, it's 99.96, so four. Uh, 0.04 were lost, but it's not critical in fact. I don't think that it's a hardcore analytics uh, tools tool, but still you don't have anything better than this. However, you say accumulation, well, we have extension from PG Pro that can do this, and Alexander Karatkov can give you more information on this. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. My question is about profiler. So this event running looks like it's missing. I see that it's like a CPU waiting. If we see wait event that are missing for this feed, it's like null and null. We consider that backend process is doing some background job and we put it into running that it's not idle but it's closer to CPU. Yes, it's closer to CPU. The process is making some job. My question is about packeting. Are you planning to add planning uh, to add packet packaging feature for Ubuntu or something like this? When it was written on C, all my friends were so happy to have it. And in PG D, DG Postgres Development Group, there were packages for Ubuntu and on Launchpad. I did have some packages, but the comp comp compiling uh, procedure is very um, strange. It actually seek faults the, the the binary file, and now I have a dev branch, and master calculates for releases. And when I have a commit with release. Well, Travel CI doesn't only make build, it also builds binary file and put it into a release section. So if you take a look... At releases, so these releases are here. All we have is to take vget, then follow the link and use start. So the thing is, there is Go project that can actually uh, make all this job. Well, it, that's great because I'm not uh, very well aware of Go. And, but I, as I said, I'm not a professional programmer. And if it supports such a thing, I, will, I would like to take a look. Because we see it was very easy, and now I have to tell everybody that there is a link to my releases. One more question about query ID. We see query ID, but looks like that the field is uh, truncated. Can we see it fully?
if we don't cut the name, at certain moment of time the width of columns will uh, will be different. It will change, and it's actually very. It's not very user friendly. It's very frustrating. That is why column width uh, adapts to a certain uh, value. Well, it's a very difficult case, but eventually column width compressed and it doesn't change. If we'd like to make it bigger, we just uh, use arrows to select the field and then just uh, increase the width with, the, with another arrow and it will stay. So it will stay even if you change the sorting. Okay, because it's a very crucial moment for me, for, for me because Queer ID is a very accurate address. So from the very beginning the design was like this, but we decided to change it because it wasn't very um, convenient to have interface like this. And in mid-February I'm planning to, uh, to, have, to have a new version with the fixed uh, column width. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Uh, thank you very much, Alexei.